The next session, uh, which is called Guru Mantras, has the three wise men that IntelliCap has invited to share, uh, sharing their wisdom with us. Starting out, um, the first session is by Nick Hughes. Nick is right here. He's founder and managing director of Signal Point Partners, founded in 2009, to deliver essential services in emerging markets, mainly via mobile. Previously, Nick was the head of global payments at Vodafone, where he started M-Pesa, the emerging world's largest mobile money transfer service. M-Pesa actually allows people to transfer money, pay bills, and save using a mobile phone without a bank account. The service is designed to work on even the most basic handset and is secure, quick, and simple to use. I'm sure Nick has many interesting things to tell us. I welcome Nick to, this, to the stage, please. Great. Uh, well, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, my thanks to the organizers for inviting me at uh, what was quite late notice uh, to come and talk to you about something which I'm very passionate about, and that's the, the potential uh, of using mobile technology to sort of radically disrupt service delivery in emerging markets. I've got a few slides and a couple of videos that I want to show. Um, it, I'm, I'm going to move quite quickly through these, and I'm going to try and leave a, a little bit of time for sort of open uh, floor questions. Uh, so first of all, today there are five billion mobile phones out there in the world. Uh, and many of those are in the hands of people who have previously been invisible to service providers. You know, they've simply been beyond the reach of, of service providers in a traditional sense. And yet we have a point of contact with them. We have a device in their hands that's live in a network that we can send information to and we can collect information back. And SignalPoint, that's uh, the company that I set up in uh, 18 months ago, believes that that's a, a, a very large commercial opportunity. You know, we're a single bottom line company, but we think by the fact we're, we're, we're working in emerging markets and we're reaching hundreds of thousands of people, it's also an opportunity to, to put very, very positive and disruptive services into the marketplace that can result in uh, an improvement in the well-being of, of the consumers who are out there. Now, the case study uh, that's often referred to and which I'm linked to is M-Pesa, which is M-Pesa is a Swahili word for, for cash or for money. M is for mobile. And what I'd like to do to start with is show you a CNN clip that was taken in 2007 when CNN heard about M-Pesa and what was happening about six months after launch and got down and sent a news team in. I think they did a very good job of capturing in a succinct way what power mobile can have in emerging markets in the financial services space. So if we could play the first video, please. Now, in Kenya here, there's an invaluable news to that. The first one, CNN is Christian for oh dear. How a new user is making business without account a safe and convenient reality. Simon Meischer might not look the role, but he's a pioneer in the world's latest technology. With his mobile phone, Simon is leading a revolution in the way people spend money. Simon can now deposit, transfer, and withdraw cash instantly. Just his mobile. Work is easier now, he says, because when this boat trader sells an animal, the money comes through to his mobile with M-Pesa. For 20 years, Simon's business has been goats, buying and selling them. And in all that time, like so many of the other traders here, he has never had his own bank account. But for these guys, this is their bank account. Each goat, a walk-in credit card. But Mbessa promises to change all that, bridging the gap between the goat and the credit card. After settling his goat, Simon puts his little or mobile on money or deposit the sh Once the money is in account, he can use his phone to pay for anything instantly. Like in Nani, 
Simon says he's had over $10,000 stolen from him in the past, but now if his phone is stolen, his money will be safe. The fuse the mobile are without the product ID card, and Simon can get a replacement card with his money on it. It's good for Simon the Canadians, because when he meets bugs now, they want nothing to steal from him. So he comes to see you, but Joseph says this is only the beginning. The people are using it to send money from one person to another, and I want to see this product become really the true mobile the person wants. So it comes parent company Vodafone hopes to introduce this technology to India and Afghanistan next. Maybe one day soon, Simon could be using his phone to buy something from you. <laughs> Christian Purefoy, CNN. Okay, uh, it was a grainy image and the audio wasn't particularly clear, but I'm sure you get the impression about what M-Pesa is. It's a really simple product. We give a customer a virtual wallet and they go to any number of outlets and can load cash into that wallet and that cash gets turned into electronic value. There's no sign-up charge, there's no minimum balance. You can do lots of transactions once that's, that cash has been converted into electronic money in your wallet. Uh, and you can use that phone to, to move money around. You can send money person to person. You can pay for school fees. You can pay for bills. If you're a businessman or woman, you can pay your suppliers. You can collect money from it. And this, the, the curve to look at is the curve on the right-hand side of the screen there. From launch to today, we've gone from zero to 14.5 million users in Kenya. That's about 70% of, of the adult population are using, this pro are using m -Pesa to move money around in small denominations. Now, every single day, around $200 million moves in electronic transactions around these M this, this, this community of m -Pesa users. And th that $200 million is done in tiny transaction sizes. So typically, it's around $5 or $10 or $15. So what, what we managed to do with m -Pesa was hit a sweet spot with what the customers actually wanted to use mobiles for. Now, we're not a bank, uh, we're a telco, or we were a telco when we launched it. And there's lots of questions around, well, what's the role of the network operators as they step over this line and use this device, which is in people's hands, and use their distribution networks to provide what effectively is a financial service? But, and, and us, we could spend uh, you know, a long time talking about the, the, the regulations in this space, uh, and we, you know, we, we could certainly um, get, get, get buried in some detail there. But the, the point is the customers absolutely appreciate the service and that's why we've gone from zero to 14 and a half million subscribers in four years and I think if you take away the constraints the regulatory constraints and you think about how you put that product into the marketplace the most important thing is it's had a very very positive impact uh, upon the upon the user base and, and the and the eco economics at the bottom of the pyramid in Kenya so what I'd like to do is talk briefly about well there's an impact on the business as well um, that M-Pesa results uh, contributed significantly to the overall revenue generated by Safaricom last year. This is the data that was published by Bloomberg about a year ago. It, it's added about $70 million to the bottom line in, in Kenya. Now, that's a, that's a relatively big proportion of Safaricom's overall business. Safaricom have now set up an entirely new division within their business called Mobile Financial Services. And so they see this as the future. They're putting a lot of time and effort and very good management skills into growing this business even further. So w w when I was thinking about what we could talk about during this session, there are lots of things that I could pick up uh, and we could discuss that might be useful to you as an audience. So the funding side of it is interesting. Some of you may know the history on M-Pesa. Vodafone wouldn't actually put the money in to start with. When I, I went to them with this sort of rough idea, look, I think we should be doing financial services in emerging markets. Actually, Vodafone looked at me and said, well, you don't have a business case. You can't really explain what the regulators are going to think about this. Nobody's done it at scale anywhere else. Um, I'm sorry, Nick, you know, there's the door in the office. Come back uh, when you've got more information. Now, it's impossible to get a good business case together quickly in a space like this and pass all of the internal hurdles that you'll find in large corporates and large organizations. But what happened was DFID, which is a, a part of the UK, UK government, had put a challenge fund together of 15 million sterling and said, look, we've got some funds here. We will give these funds away to the private sector to take a risk on a project which they normally wouldn't do. And so that was perfect for M-Pesa. I was able to get a million sterling from the UK government, DFID, 
I had a, a CEO in Michael Joseph in Kenya who said, yes, okay, I broadly understand the concept. I'll be your marketplace. And I was able to get to the point where I could prove to the head office back in the UK that this is a product which works. So I spent that million pounds proving the business case. And the rest is history. This is now generating, you know, 10 times that, you know, you know much more than 100 times that in profit for the company four years four years later. So the funding side of it is a challenge, and I think that's, that's where I, I believe there's a role for things like challenge funds and where the social impact investment community could be looking uh, more closely. How do you get those early stage moves made by people that have an idea? The corporate funds aren't available, but, but the, there has to be, somebody has to put some money on the table to make these things happen. Um, but what I want to talk about really is the proposition itself. It's a very simple proposition. The launch t a television advert was just send money home. At no point did we ever mention mobile banking or mobile savings or mobile credit. We simply said to the consumer base in Kenya, do you want to send money home? And we didn't invent the need to send money home. People have always moved money around. They've sent it on taxis or matatus, or they take time out of work and travel with cash. All we said is, look, here's a way to move money. It's quicker, it's cheaper, it's secure, and, and it's much more convenient for you. So by putting together a proposition which hits what the customers actually want to do with, with, a, with a mobile uh, service was, was critical. Uh, we've seen lots of attempts to launch mobile banking schemes in, in many markets around the world, but there's a, there's, a, there's a complexity with those, which often means the consumers simply don't get it. They don't understand what mobile banking is. They're not in the banked community. They don't particularly trust banks. They don't like banking. And so it's no surprise when you, when you struggle to get much customer in intake at the very early stages in, in launching a proposition. So, no, we didn't, we didn't come up with send money home as, a, as, a, as an epiphany. It didn't sort of hit me or the rest of the team overnight. We said, look, broadly, we have an idea, mobiles and financial services. Surely our distribution, the fact we can move data around securely, the fact that customers already have devices in their hands, let's just think about what we can do in, in that space during a pilot phase. And we actually went into market with, a, with a, an MFI. We tried dispersing loans and recovering payments for loans. And actually, what, what, what the customers showed us happening during the first nine months was, actually, they don't like all the loan repayment side of it. And in fact, that was too complex for them to understand. But what they did like was the fact they could send money to each other. So we stripped out some of the complexity and went to market with the simplest proposition we could, which on the left-hand side of your screen here, it was simply P2P, send money home and buy airtime. And what's happened over the last four years is, once we've got to a critical base of customers, we've been able to layer on more sophisticated services. So the original vision of doing loans and repayments and savings products, which is where we started, we said, let's actually get into the market. We think we can do this. We had to strip all of that away and go to the marketplace with a much simpler proposition. And only now are we starting to see much more sophisticated financial services being delivered uh, over the mobile channel. Now, things get much more complex up here as well. Suddenly, your deposit taking, which in the eyes of the, of, of the regulators is, is, you know, is a big issue, an important issue for them to control. Whereas down here on the left-hand side, we're simply providing a payment service. We take cash, we turn it into electronic value, and we move it around. Now, it gets much more complex up here. The business case changes. You've got different players in the value chain. You've got the regulators getting much more interested. But if you try and start at that far end of the scale, you know, it's no surprise that we've seen a lot of mobile money schemes just hit the wall because they're trying to do too much uh, too early. Um, MP 